Hey, welcome and join your blended family, all the B fams out there. What up? We are here with another hot topic coming on a Monday episode to help start your week mm. off strong in your family. Because when we really look at it, family is a lot more important than our work. And so by you taking the time to sit here and listen to stuff like this, you're pouring into you, you're pouring into your family. And yeah. we just want to say kudos, pat on the back. We are cheering you on because that is, you're doing awesome. You really are. Yeah, and this is one of those topics that, man, I I do think it could uh, it can relate to anyone in the step family, but I think the biological mom specifically has a hard time with this one. But really, as we begin to unfold this episode, I think whatever part you play, you're going to be like, oof, because I don't think it's something we really realize is an issue yeah. until we are... Um, kind of come face to face with some reality. That's true. And what we're talking about today is we are unpacking the fear of losing control in our step family. Yeah. Oh, just when I say that, it's like, oh, because we want to hold on so tight. Mm -hmm. And man, that can really have some devastating impacts on our family, but we don't want to let go either. And how, so where is the balance? What does that look like? We are going to unpack all of that and how we can take that and see some really cool things in our step family once we learn to balance things out. So y'all stay tuned. I would say stay tuned like this is a radio show <laughs> or something. Have, have you noticed that? Has anyone else noticed that? Out of all the things you do you all listening? the time, I haven't Y'all really... stay tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> So, but honestly, we will be right back. <laughs> so, talking fear, just saying fear. Sometimes I, I don't think we even realize that it is fear, but we just feel like we've got to hold on so tight to our family and that our family should, you know, our kids should operate the way that we tell them to operate. Our kids should believe the way we believe our kids should achieve the way achieve the way that we believe they should achieve or we know that they can achieve and we have a lot of fear that's tied to that if they don't i think we can parent so often out of fear of them not becoming the uh, adults that we know they can be. Yeah, we, from them not the fear meeting their, failure. their full potential. And I think that's what would all of us want as parents. We want to raise children whose kids fulfill their, their potential. We know what they are capable of. And when we see it going a different path, and especially when we experience other people playing a factor in that, holding, we think, holding them back, um, it can bring the the boxing gloves out or the mama bear in you, you know, or the daddy bear, it can bring that out of you because you're like, no, I need to make sure this happens. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's one of those that just, you know, man, it really drives us as parents. And whenever we're even in a nuclear family, this is kind of what you want for your kids. You see them, okay, they're going to go to this college, they're going to do this, oh, I see that they're really good at that, that's what they're going to do. And when things don't line up, we really grab control and we try to force it to have, you will do this, whether you like it or not, because it's good for you and I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, you're doing it in that like, um, oh, my mom used to talk through her teeth. And uh, when I do it, I'm like, no. Nope. Ah. But and, and we don't do it in such a harmful, hateful way by choice. Um, we do it in a way that we are doing it in love because we do want our kids to succeed. And a lot of times it's because maybe we missed out on something and we thought, okay, we want to give our kids all of these opportunities. And then especially if you add the step family in there now and you're like, okay, I don't want them to feel like they're missing out on anything. So let me present them with even more opportunities. And so we began to map out this future, this plan, this life that we see unfolding for our children. And 
reality sets in and we don't have the ability to make other people do what we think they should do. Well, you have the, the these are just common parent issues, fear parenting and fear issues that we struggle with and we have to figure out, okay, what's the balance? How do we overcome this? But then you add the blended family, step family aspect into that. Now there's another side of control that you don't have that you try is whenever your kids are now in another home and now they're being influenced by uh, their other biological parent and by other external uh, outsiders that Mm -hmm. are out of your control that you're trying to control now. So now it's not even just about being in your house, but whenever they go to their other parents or something, now you're trying to force control into that as well. And that's just talking about the kids. You know, now we can talk about trying to force our relationship, our spouse into how we want them to act or control. You know, I mean, there's all types of fear that can come in in a step family. Yeah, and I mean, I was, uh, I would like to say, oh, that, you know, this happened to this person or whatever. This happens in blended families all the time. We see this um, occurring where biological moms are trying to control what happens at their co parents' house and that it was just something that happened to other people. But man, I dealt with this big time to where I just, I had this revelation of what's right. (laughs) (laughs) Gosh darn it. I needed them to have the revelation as well. I wanted them to believe. um, And I say them as my ex-spouse, as Randall's ex-spouse, as their, their pair or their new relationships. Like this is how things should be. And I need you to get on board with this because this is right. And so we're going to unpack. Uh, uh, we're going to unpack four different types of fear that we can have at, in a in a step family, because these these are just big struggles. And, and the first one is the fear of losing control from the other parents' house, losing control in our kids from them going in to, with their other parent. And you know, for me, you know, just kind of. I, this hit us really hard, and I think this is what brought along this revelation for us and how heavy influencing it was in our family and how much is actually pushing everybody away was this realization. But it, it took us I, – I remember there was – the the big one for me was whenever my daughter – you know, I had full custody of, of her – for the majority of her, her life until she hit 14, she decided that she was going to go live with her, her mother, her biological mom. And they had made this decision outside of talking with me. And this was over a summer and she was already battling depression. She was really struggling. And so we had her in counseling and I just remember her going to visit one day, uh, for summer when she was 14 and she called me up and said, dad, I'm not coming back. And that was like, whoa, yeah. <laughs> you know, that I, for so long, I was trying to have that control. Like, no, this is how you're, you're going to be here. You're going to, this is where, how we're going to do things and yada, yada. And, you know, it's a lot easier whenever they're younger to control mm-hmm. and, uh, to, to try to control, you know, what the do's, the don'ts and things of that. But whenever they get older, it's a lot harder. You don't have that. And there there's becomes this transition. This resistance. Th- yeah. This resistance. And you get that even in a nuclear family. But in a blended family, you see that really heightened. And for me, whenever that happened, I got that phone call. I remember just being so broken from that that phone call because I knew there was a there I couldn't control that anymore and it would be harmful for her emotionally if I did now the problem was I you know I believed one way you know I have my own thoughts I have my own morals I have my own you know I I try to take everything back 
biblically and I try to go off God's truth and, you know, no, I'm not perfect at that by any means, but, you know, I try to let that be my indicator and in how I operate in life. And, uh, you know, so I feel like everyone should do that. Right. And my kids should do that. And my, my, uh, co-parent, they should do that. And that's how they should operate in their family. When in reality, they have their own beliefs. They have their own set of beliefs and ways of doing things. And even though I may completely disagree with that, I can't control that. And I think as, as parents, that's part of that fear is we try to control the other parent and we try to force them into believing and doing what we think is right. Well, and I think it's all on the, the approach too, because even if both households are um, Christian and your way of doing things, I think when we were raising the kids early on, we were both so black and white and more rule or law based and not fully embracing that relationship side and now we did in certain aspects of having fun and doing things but when that your kids hit a certain age you you do put some rules and stuff in place to keep them safe and you teach them these morals um so that they can become you know good human beings but we can get so fixated on those those rules and what's black and white what's right and wrong instead of leading by some example in that relationship there. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I think that's, that's one big struggle is we try to control, be out of fear that our kids aren't going to believe what we believe or aren't going to grow up doing what we believe is right or how we operate. And that creates so much static whenever we're trying to create, whenever we're trying to, uh, force the other parents house or, you know, get them to believe what we believe and they're trying to do the same. So now you are going to fight more, you know, if we're just, you know, calling it what it is, we're going to have a lot more resistance. We're going to be at each other's throat. Our phone calls are going to be where somebody's yeah. hanging up on the other. Everything's one. a hot topic or a trigger. Yeah. And then we're bringing up the past and well, it, it all stemmed back from this and we're all starting to mudsling at each other and we can't reach an agreement and you know, all it is is fussing and fighting because we're, if we get to the heart of it, we're trying to force the other parent to do things our way. And they're trying to force us to do things their way. And in reality, that's not how it works. Our way of doing things is fine and good. That's how we choose to do it in our home. Their way of doing things in their home, that's what they choose is fine and good. And that's what they do in their home. We cannot control that. And once we can get to a point of releasing that fear of what am I sending my kids off into? Mm -hmm. uh, You know, I think that's, we hear that a lot. We felt that before. It's like, what are my kids going into? And, oh my goodness, what are they being exposed to? What's being said? And I think it's such an extreme. I mean, there's, we can be on the simplest things of I'm trying to feed my kids healthy food and over there they're eating junk all the time. Or it could be to the extreme of I'm sending them over there into a war zone. And so just disclaimer on that. I mean, there is a point where you as the, the adult, the caring adult in their life, if there is physical harm and and sometimes emotional harm as well as just as bad mental harm where you do need to step in But I think we can think all of these things are very extreme when really they're not as serious as we make them out to be. And so we can take the the little things and make these mountains um, out of a molehill. And then when it comes to these really big issues, um, then it's like, oh, wow, I wish I was just dealing with the <laughs> uh, with yeah. the PG-13 movie or the music that I don't approve of anymore. Yeah, and, you know, I, I think that's, yeah, we, we do make things off a lot bigger than what they are. But if we can just realize that this is our dynamics. This is our blended family dynamics is our child is going to be in our home and we do things this way. And then they're going to be in their other parents' home and 
That's the way that they do things. There's, they're going to be exposed to do two different lifestyles, and that's just part of it. And when we can quit trying to control the other parent's lifestyle, like we said, as long as it's not physically abusive, you know, harm to the, to the point where we do have to step in, courts and all that have to get involved. But most of the time, that's not it. You know, it's just, just disagreeances. And whenever we can get to a point of saying, well, this is the way that we do things in our home and they're going to do things their way and I can't control that and they can't control mine and we just have to come to terms with that, then now we're not putting our kids in the middle of it because our kids will always feel the resistance between us and our ex-spouse. And Mm -hmm. the harder and stronger that is, the more our kids feel in the middle of that. And so the quicker we can... uh, come to not allowing that to happen quicker we can come to that realization of I can't control that so I got to let go of that fear and they're going to do things that way that's fine that's what they choose that's still their parent and I'm going to do things you know my way here when are we can come to that and now us and that uh, other parent aren't fighting over all this anymore because we're not trying to control each other. They're, we're not together, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, then it helps our kids. It relieves a lot of pressure from our kids on that. Yeah, and I think there's a whole other side of that too. Even if what's happening at the other household is not unhealthy at all, it's just they have a whole other household. There's this fear that comes attached to being um, in a blended family coming from divorce. That if me, at least this is this is my mom, biological mom perspective that I dealt with for so long. If I didn't have the majority of custody of my kids, then I'm a bad mom. And so that fear of judgment from other people. So I had to hold on to this full custody. I needed to have the kids with me the majority of the time. Because if I shared 50-50 with my ex-spouse, people are going to look at me and be like, Oh, she lost the court battle. Oh, what? She's not a good mom. What kind of parent is... Yeah, she... And when, in reality, like, that's just how life and society has created things to be. And it's just not true. Like, you're not less of a mom if you let your other spouse... And I say let, uh, because that's that control, right? But we want to hold on to them. If we let them be 50% of the parent that they are, and we're in such a weird place that we want to complain about the other parents not doing what we want them to do and be a part of their life, but yet we also don't want to allow them in to make any of those decisions and be a part of it, 50% of it. And so that's where it's so just, it's so confusing when it comes to being a parent in a blended family for us. Um, in that adult role is because we feel like even letting go brings this whole other set of judgment from people. And so that is, that's the second one is the fear of judgment. We have the fear of judgment of man, you know, or, you know, and I use that term, you know, in woman or definitely of the husband (laughs) or fear of other moms, wife or fear of, you know, uh, outsiders looking in at your family, fear of what are people going to think in my church about me and the, you know, being a parent and my kid comes back, you know, looking or acting this way when that's not what I believe or, you know, and how are other people going to see that? And so now I feel like I got to control my kid because of the fear of how others are judging me of what they're doing and choosing to do. And there's all kinds of pressure that comes from that fear of trying to look a certain way in front of other people. Yeah, I mean, and as a mom life, it's, I mean, even in a nuclear family, that's just part of it. I mean, I remember my, my friends' kids, they would always fix their kids' hair, their little daughter's hair, the most adorable ways and send them to school. And so I'm over here, you know, pulling those pigtails a little tighter than my daughter wants. And we're battling and struggling that in the morning to get her ready because I want her to look a certain way so that when she's presented in front of the other moms and the other kids, she fits in the right way. And that's just a silly example, but that is what goes so deep. And a lot of the decisions we make for our family is we're not doing what's best for our kid necessarily. We're doing what we think is best that other people are going to perceive our kid. Yeah, and, you know, you talk even on a a male standpoint, 
I mean, you can have the fear of being the man, you know, uh, as us dads can, you know, we're supposed to be the head of the house and we're supposed to be the guy and the dad. And, you know, we make, you know, we, we, we lead our family, but now our child is going into another, uh, their other parent's house, which now has another man and another male figure. And he's the leader of that house. And he's the leader of the family. Ooh, that messed with the and, pride a little bit. And huh? yeah, now you got this pride thing happening for guys. And it's like, well, I've got to be the louder lion. <laughs> you know, I'm the biological dad. And that dad can't tell my kid anything. And, you know, you can really let that pride, that fear of how others see you. Do they see you as the lesser man? Hmm. Mm. I just hit some buttons on that one. Do they see you as that? And so now, even as us dads, now we're making uh, decisions based off that fear of judgment of others on, am I man enough? Yeah. Am I leading my house enough? Or is the other father stepping in and stepping in my territory? And man, that can really lead to... A lot of I think that's, pride issues. That's like where that Disneyland dad concept comes in, right? Because you're you're wanting to create that not dominance, but you know to. Well, it is, yeah. Well, I guess so. It's <laughs> like okay, well, I'm the better dad. Let me, you know, I'm gonna buy on do the this. Fun stuff. We're yeah. gonna go to this, and and yeah, they're gonna love me more. They're gonna look at me better, and. I'm dad. <laughs> and then the other dad, a lot of times on the reverse side of that is like coming in harder with the rules because they're like, okay, no, this is the right way to do things. So I'm going to come even stronger and try to create these, this atmosphere of creating a child that's walking the straight and narrow because the other dad is being so free with that. There's just Oh, the brain is just overwhelming with the stuff that's going on that we don't even notice. Well, and it's, you know, and it all boils down to fear. It, it's, you know, that's that fear of judgment and how other people see you. And so now you're parenting out of fear again. You're, you're parenting in a completely different way than what is healthy. You know, the, the, the image I was getting as we were talking about this is two rams that are just butting heads. They're just ramming together. What's going to happen? They're both going to have a headache. <laughs> <laughs> they're both going to walk away dizzy i mean that's not what we were <laughs> intended to do yeah. and so it's really being able to call that for what it is and you know on either side uh just saying you know what it doesn't matter what other people think about me or my family this is my family they don't have a say in that truly the only person that should matter uh, uh opinion that should matter is God's opinion for your family. That's it. You know, if we can ever get to that point and sit there and say, you know what? I don't yeah. care what others think. I'm going to parent the way uh, God instructs me. I'm going to try to take it back and allow him to work on me so that I can be the best parent. Because ultimately, I want to be the best dad for my kids. And if I'm parenting out of fear, if I'm parenting out of pride, I am not being the best dad for my kids. Now I'm parenting for myself. I am parenting to try to make myself and my image look better. And whenever I'm doing that, all it's doing is hurting my kids and not helping them. But it takes us to have to do some really serious soul searching to get to that point. Yeah. Well, and I think it goes into that, that third point, that third fear is that in the process, if we're not holding on to this control, this thing that we think it should look like, that we're going to lose our kids yeah. in the process, that we're going to lose them to the other parent, or we're going to lose them to their morals, or we're going to lose them to the world, or we're going to lose them. Sometimes it's, I mean, I know there were, there were a lot of nights that I thought letting go of some of this stuff, I was going to lose them like their life. Um, I was just fearful of the decisions that they would make going in to their teenage years because it is a hard, crazy world out there. And we, our kids are being exposed to so many things um, through social media and through their, their friendships and things in, in the school that if they make these choices that it could take them down a path that ultimately ends their life. And I parented so hard trying to make sure that my kids walk the straight and narrow because I wanted them to live a life that was long and satisfying. 
And what's insane is all of these things that we're talking about and holding on tight with the fear of each one of these areas is actually doing more damage because we're holding on so tight that it's breaking the relationship. They're running from that. You could take down each one of these things that we just talked about and the when you become extreme in those areas, and I know you may not think you're being extreme. I'm talking to you because I'm talking to myself. You may not think you're being extreme. You may think you're just doing what is right. And I'm sharing that with you with as gentleness as I can because I was in the exact same place. I thought I was just doing right by them. But by doing what I thought was right in such a wrong way, it pushed them away. It drove them away. It drove them into the things that I was trying to save them from the whole time. With this, from the fear of losing our kids, I lost Riley. I I lost her whenever she called and said, Dad, I'm not coming back. It was that fear of losing that, 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 that fear of judgment, the, the fear I was parenting out of that, and it pushed her away. And so much so that she ended up, the, she left. And, but, you know, having said that, that was one of the hardest things as a parent that ever has happened to me. But there was some really beautiful things that came from that, and we'll share those here in just a minute. Blended families can be hard at times, can't they? Have you ever said, I don't feel like me and my spouse are connecting, or I'm bending over backwards and my stepkid still pushes me away? Or do you feel like your family's doing okay, but you'd like it to be more than okay? You want your family to level up, take it to an even stronger level. The truth is we're all looking for more joy and happiness in our lives. So how do we start seeing that in our blended family? Because really, our family is the first place we should truly be enjoying and having the most fun with. So how do you enjoy your blended family? You create more fun opportunities that your family loves doing. These are big things, they're small things, things that cost money, things that don't cost money. But the more fun you have together, the less blended family drama you'll have, which equals more joy and happiness for everyone. Now, you may be saying, yeah, but I don't know how to do that. I don't even know where to start. That's okay. We walk you through five fun dates you get to have with your family. These dates help you discover those fun things your family loves doing. You'll walk away with so many more great ideas and have an amazing, easy plan to make it happen and to keep it going. Plus, you get to have a lot of fun discovering all this in the process. We walk you through everything and make it really fun and easy. So how do you enjoy your blended family? By going on these five dates and discovering fun in your step family. You'll be so glad you did. Have more fun together and you'll see less problems. The link to get started on this amazing journey is in the show notes of this episode. So whenever she had called and she had said, Dad, I'm not, I'm not coming back. My heart broke, and there, there, we took some time on that, and I knew that I had to let go in a sense, but then it got to a point to where I was seeing some things, and I made some choices that I fought for control back. You know, she came to visit, and I, you know, if y'all haven't heard the story, <laughs> we've talked about it before, but... I'd canceled her plane ticket back home and I was going to hold her here and she wasn't going back. And I was parenting out of fear of losing her. And if I'm honest, I fed into a lot. I fed you a lot of that fear. Um, Well, and I felt it, you know, I I felt it personally because I mean, she's my daughter, right? And I'm sure you can relate as you're hearing this year. You're like, well, they're my daughter. They're my son. I can't, I don't want to let go. I don't want to lose control. And that's just part of us as parents and blended families is we don't, but our dynamics look different. We don't have the full say. And Whenever we try to force that, all we're doing is pushing our kids away from us. And what happened was that that was our that was our story. You know, that's our journey. Is we ended up losing Riley, but 
I have great hope that God worked on us, Mm -hmm. you know, through that time. It got so bad that our relationship was damaged for three years. She wouldn't talk to us. And there was this, it was just a hardship, a brokenness. But instead of allowing that to destroy our family, we ran to God and I leaned on him more than I have ever leaned on him in my life. And actually through that, he showed me how to lean on him in the, some of the hardest things you can ever go through. And from that, it allowed me to recognize fear. And he showed me that he has her. He's taking care of her. Even when I'm not seeing hope over there, when I'm seeing more harm for her, he's saying, I've got her. I'm protecting her. And whenever I really started Uh, just putting my fear on God and saying, here it is. And he's comforting me saying, I got it. I got this situation. I'm taking care of her. I'm the best dad that, that any dad could ever be for her. And once I finally allowed that to sink in, I was able to relinquish control. I was able to let go of that, that control that I was trying to parent out of. And now I started focusing more on relationship. I started focusing more on love. And actually, whenever I approached our relationship in that way, I was met with some rejection at first. She still wouldn't talk to me. But that's what started breaking down the walls. Even though there was rejection, I was still approached with relationship, approached with love. And finally, that's what broke down the walls. And now me and her have the best relationship that one could ever have with their daughter. I mean, it is powerful. It is something I I could never have imagined back then. But I had to relinquish control. I had to sit there and say, okay, I cannot parent this way. I've got to parent out of love no matter what she's facing, what she's in. She has a whole nother family dynamic that she's involved in, and that's just her life too. And I had to get to a point of saying, I'm okay with that. I just love her, and I want what's best for her, and I'm always here for her. And whenever I did that, it changed everything. I think it's such a beautiful picture of God's love and how our kids can experience who God is through our parenting. Because when Riley was younger, her even though she, she was a daddy's girl and she had a, a, a good relationship with Randall, but it was, a lot of it was based in fear. She will tell you, she was scared of her dad. She didn't want to disappoint him and that kind of stuff. And just that connection of, of what that looks like when we're talking about our relationship with God. But then when Randall switched this approach with her and he came at it with this um, unconditional love, she now does not have a relationship with Randall out of the fear of disappointing him. Her relationship is just pure, unconditional, daddy's girl kind of love that they have. It is such a beautiful thing to watch. And that is that example of how most of us in our relationship with God is, right? Is that first we're trying to not do things wrong because we don't want to disappoint him or we don't want to be struck down or go to hell. And so we're trying so hard to do things that are right. But then when we finally have this realization that our father loves us unconditionally, yeah. we're able to have a deeper connection in that way. Um, and I just wanted to piggyback off what you were saying during that time, because there's so much that goes into our step families when it comes to losing control. When I watched Randall go through that with Riley, and it was difficult for me too, um, her being my stepdaughter, even though we didn't have the greatest relationship um, to watch him go through that and just to lose that opportunity of loving her, um, the way that I did, but watching that, I said, Oh heck no, that ain't happening with my kids. (laughs) Yours might've left. Mine is not leaving. So I held on so much tighter and really began to parent even deeper out of that fear of control and judgment because and even a little we've talked about this before a little competition like well your way of parenting drove your child away so let me show you that I'm going to um, do it the right way and my kids are never going to leave and I was wrong (laughs) and they fell they they fell suit and they each left as well and that's uh, the time period that our house turned into this revolving door of them going and coming and going and coming. 
but it, it was another eye opener of I really had no control and I had to begin to learn and trust God went through the same process that Randall had to go through with Riley and lean on him that he is taking care of my kids. He's going to protect them and keep them safe. Even if the worst possible scenarios happen, my kids um, are under his care and that I've got to trust that. And so when I released the worry and fear of their future and what that looked like, even if they became, I mean, these are the things I thought they would become dra- drug addicts or they would become um, in the sex trafficking. You know, they would like all these things go through your head when you're a parent of what's going to happen to your children. Um, they would end up in jail. And what God's been showing me is like, even in those situations, like we think, oh, these are the worst things. You're a bad mom if these things take place. Biblically, these things were taking place all the time. And God used even those. He used murderers. He used prostitutes. He used people in jail. Hello, that was Paul for the most of his life. He used people in their worst situations to do really incredible things for the kingdom of God and for other people. So when God began to reveal these things to me, even if your kids make some bad choices in life, and they will, (laughs) I still can use them and will use them. Trust me, babe. Trust me. And I'm like, okay. Okay. And so when I could let go of that, what if scenarios that play in your head, then God began to work on my kids. He's still working on all of our kids. He's still working on us. And so when I could let that go, then I could just love them freely for who they are. And when I love them freely for who they are, I mean, me and my daughter just had this conversation coming back uh, from a road trip and she just opened up about our relationship. And it just melted my heart to hear her talk about the way she feels about me and the way I feel about her. And it doesn't always look like what I thought her life would look like right now, but it's her life. She's choosing a path for herself and she knows that no matter what she chooses at this point, I am there for her. But the way I parented her in her preteen teenage years told her the exact opposite. It said, mom, you only love me if I do this, 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 and this. And that portrayed to her what God's love looked like. So, man, there's, I feel like I could talk on this for a lot longer. (laughs) Well, it's just powerful. And, you know, even in that situation, whenever, uh, whenever our other two left, uh, they started leaving one by one. Uh, that was the same time that Riley came back and our relationship was restoring. And so from that, we saw hope, we saw healing and, You know, it was just one of those that God was really showing us how to be better parents, that we were before, we were parenting out of fear. We were parenting out of control of, we didn't want to lose control. And that leads us to the last one is losing control in our own home. We didn't want to lose that control. You know, it, it was, we wanted our home to look this way. We wanted our kids to act this way. And ultimately, whenever we're doing that, we are putting conditions on the way that we love them. Mm -hmm. Whether we believe we are or we're not, that that's how yeah. they're feeling. They're feeling like our love is conditional. And they're not good enough. And they're not good enough. We're setting a bar that is too high. They can never achieve it, so they're not even going to try. And that's not our intentions. That's not what we're trying no. to do. It's like we we would love to argue back with them and be like, no, we just see the potential in you and (laughs) you should be achieving this because you're smart and you're kind and God dog it, people like you. (laughs) (laughs) And you know, that that's, we have that and we, we don't want to lose that in our own home. Sorry to cut you off. I think we think that teenagers have no value in life and the things that they say, because they're always trying to butt heads with us. But I learned so much about life and parenting and love through those teenage years, like being open Mm. and receptive. Like, even though that was such a painful time to go through with our children, I don't think that I would change it now because I don't know that I would have changed. I didn't have people like Randall and Scarlett talking to me in a podcast, telling me these things. Um, I had to learn it the hard way. But now looking back, I don't know that I would have changed had I not experienced what that was that I, 
I'm afraid that I wouldn't have loved them so unconditionally like I can now and have such a deep relationship with them now had I not been forced to let go of that control. And I know I usually come back with the being, I was forced into it, but I chose <laughs> to let it go. Sure. I chose to trust God during that season and let him teach me so much. So be open to that too with your kids during this time period where you're like, you're dumb. You don't know nothing. You're just a teenager. <laughs> they think everything you say, if you say black, they say white. It's just, that's, that's their mindset. But allowing that time period to really open you up to some stuff that you may have been closed off on. Yeah. It's just, there, there's so much to it. And you know, so we got the fear of losing control from the other parent's house, the fear of losing control in our own house, the fear of judgment, the fear of losing our kids altogether. You know, these are just real fears that we have. And it always takes me back to uh, to Second Timothy 1, seven that God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a yeah. sound mind. And whenever we take that scripture and we really digest that, if we are parenting out of fear, if fear is the root, you know, if we, we may not even see that at first, we just see the, you know, well, they got to be this way. They got to be that way. Well, why, why do they have to be that way? Well, because, uh, I believe that's right. Why do you believe that's right? You know, why do you feel that they should feel that way? Well, I, I'm just fearful that they're not going to become successful or they're not going to, you know, that they're going to fail in life. And, you know, once and then we, God's like, well, what's success? And right. It's like, oh, so it's re it really, once we dig down deep and then we pull out, we see the seed and the seed is actually fear. That's not of God. You know, God doesn't give us that. That's something that we've put in there. We've allowed to come in and God's saying that I haven't given you that release it, you know, give it back mm -hmm. to me <laughs> because yeah. what I've given you is a, a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind to where you don't have to worry about your kids going out there. I'm going to take care of them. Uh, power to be able to overcome these obstacles, power to be a better parent, power to love unconditionally, even when we're seeing that we want to put conditions on it because we disagree with some stuff. Mm -hmm. He gives us the power to love them unconditionally. You know, there, there's, it, it all comes back to releasing it to God and saying, God, I don't know how to do this. I want to be a parent that parents unconditional with unconditional love. And I need help, help me, you know? So that's the first start. And then the, the other thing, process in overcoming this is knowing that you cannot control anyone else but yourself. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is modeling your beliefs. So I, you know, I, I take it to, uh, you know, as an example of Christianity, right? Right. We believe in Jesus Christ. And if I go up to someone and I try to force them to believe, no, Jesus did this and this, you should, if you don't, you're dumb. Because this is the truth. You know, I feel like the, the guy on the street corner, right, holding a sign. Bullhorn. Yeah, bullhorn. You're going to hell. You're going to hell if you don't believe in Jesus. And, you know, that's how we parent a lot of times with that bullhorn mentality. And what does that do? I don't want to be around those people. You know, when I see people on the street with bullhorns shouting Jesus, I want to go the opposite way. And I believe in Jesus. I love Jesus. I have a great relationship with Jesus. Yeah, it's like, don't make eye contact. <laughs> you know, yeah, don't. You know, I just went to a Christian concert, you know, and I'm coming out and being told I'm going to hell. You know, I'm like going the other way. You know, that it, that's what we're doing in our family, though, whenever we're we're parenting wonder, with a bullhorn. I wonder if they ever get anybody that comes to them as they're, you're standing in the line of the concert and they're with the bullhorn. You're going to hell if you go to the concert. If somebody's like, you know what? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for saving me from that. Yeah. But it's such a, and that is such a true example of what it's like when we're parenting with all of these things that, I mean, we don't, we're maybe not yelling it with a bullhorn, but we are trying to control things yeah. in that way. And that our, our kids aren't. All it does is pushes, pushes them, them away. away. And that's the complete opposite of what we want. But if you have someone to show up and Jesus gave us the perfect example at how he loves us and shows us how to love, is this that unconditional love? I love you no matter what. You know, just come to me and, you know, I love you.
come to me and I'm, I'll set you free. Well, and he <laughs> sat with them where they were at. Yeah. He, he didn't want them to stay there either, but he, he met them where they were at in the situation that they were in. If it was um, something that was less than what he has their best for them he still sat down with them in the middle of their whatever and then began to just love on them and that's that's what what changed changed. that made them want to follow jesus so what a great example that we lead we model what we believe and we don't try to shove it down anyone else's face we we sit there and we model what, how, what we believe to be the truth. And then we just love unconditionally. And that's loving our, our biological kids. That's loving our bonus kids. We're loving them unconditionally. I'm loving you just as you are my own. I'm not, you're not my stepson. You're my son. I'm loving you as my son. There are no conditions to it. Uh, I'm going to love you forever. God has placed me in your life. I'm going to, I'm going to be there. I am a father figure to you. I am a mother figure now that for love you. Does it physically feels different, um, for your children as far as it's your biological or your step. There is a, a difference in that feeling because one, you know, is connected with you always. And one, you have that fear that they're going to reject you or leave you, but having still have the unconditional love that you are offering to them that's what we mean by that as well sure yeah and it's, it's i love you i love you you know and they're uh we always like to say that love looks different right and I, our word love has one you know one meaning to kind of encompass it all and you look at the greek and the hebrew and there's different types of love for different things right uh but the thing is, I love Scarlett differently than I love my biological kid, right? Yeah. You know, there's differences in love, but it's all love. And we don't put conditions on that. It's like, well, I'm only going to love you if me and her are doing okay. If we're not doing okay, then I'm going to love you less because you're a reflection of her. You know, and, you know, same goes for any of our relationships. If we're putting conditions on how we love them, then we've doomed that relationship, right? Is is that that control? I'm going to control you. I want you to act this way so that I will love you. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and so we've got to be able to set that free, love unconditionally, model our beliefs, and whenever we're modeling out of love, that attracts our kids, that attracts our spouse, that attracts mm-hmm. everybody. Uh, but whenever we're that bullhorn guy, all it's doing is pushing our family away and creating more havoc to where nobody wants to be there. So, mm-hmm. man. Uh. Yeah, I feel like this episode could <sighs> continue and like unpack <sighs> so much. It's so freeing, though, yeah. when you can get to this point of lo- like letting go of that control, not losing it. Um, but just choosing to let it go and release it and love instead, you are free to be the mom, to be the dad, to be the spouse that you want to be so desperately. Yeah. So good. So really that that's the heart of this is whenever we hold on so tight, we push our family away. When we learn to let go and just love, con- love unconditionally, and we're going to work through it all. You know, we're going to get through all this. I- I'm loving everybody, and, and, you know, even though they may not believe what I believe, I'm going to model what I believe. I'm not going to shove it down my ex-spouse's throat. I'm just, I'm going to model love. And whenever I do that, everybody's looking from the outside going, dang. I want what they got, (laughs) you know, man, they're doing something right. Okay. What are you doing now? I'm interested, right? So it's just a different approach and we had to learn it the hard way. We learned it through struggle. We learned it through losing our kids for a period. And once we were able to understand what parent, true parenting really looks like, you know, allowing God to really work on us, that's what broke down walls. It freed us from fear and it allowed us now to have some of the best relationships we could ever have with our kids. Mm. And they know that we love them unconditionally. It doesn't matter what they do. And, and they, they love that, you know, that sets them free. They don't have that burden of, uh, I'm living in fear of disappointing my parents, mm-hmm. you know, that's not going to happen. We love you, yeah. you know, and it, it just really, it changes the dynamics of your home, of your family, just tremendously such good stuff. So listen, yeah. love model 
all that good stuff, put the bullhorn down, and man, you will change your family dynamics and see some really awesome things. So we love you guys, and we will see you on the next episode later. Bye. Thanks for joining us today. We hope this episode has been a blessing and encouraged your family journey. Make sure you stay connected with us and join our weekly blended family newsletter. We send an email out every Friday morning full of support and encouragement. And when you join, we also want to give you a free gift. So go get yours today. The link is in the show notes below. Have an amazing day. Remember to enjoy the journey with your blended family. And we'll see you on the next episode.